Welcome to this PD on the Kindergarten to Grade 8 Learning Story. Our learning target for today is that we are learning to use EdSpeed to communicate evidence of learning using the learning story. Success Criteria 1. I can use the class feed or parent group to communicate and engage with families. Success Criteria 2. I can use the learning story to share learning evidence. Success Criteria 3. I can encourage families to use the Capture app to engage and share learning evidence. In the first success criteria, we will talk about family communication and engagement. For this, you will be using either the class feed or a parent group. Think reminders, sharing pictures of what's happening in your classroom, and helpful information. In the second success criteria, we will delve deeper into the sharing of learning evidence. You would share evidence in the learning story using the EdSpe app or your desktop. And in the third success criteria, we will talk about how you can engage parents to share learning evidence on behalf of their child using the EdSpe Capture app. So remember that there are two EdSpe apps. The EdSpe app is used by teachers and parents to log into EdSpe on their phone or iPad. It is a mobile friendly version of the desktop application. Teachers can use this to take attendance, reply to messages, and more. Parents use this app to enter in absence information, sign up for three-way conferences, reply to messages, and see the river of news for the school. The EdSpe Capture app is used only for capturing learning evidence for one student at a time. The user must have a QR code to scan and they then only have access to a camera. There are no other features within this app. We will talk a little bit more about this during the PD. Let's delve deeper into how you can communicate with families by using either the class feed or a parent group. First, let's determine which most appeals to you in your context, using the class feed or creating a parent group. When using the class feed, you can post information, reminders, and messages to families, and you can create posts in advance. You can post learning materials in the library or the content section. You can create events that show up in the calendar for parents. One thing to note about the class feed, however, is that parents cannot interact with your posts. If you choose to create a parent group for communication and engagement, you can also make posts. However, you cannot create posts in advance. You can also create events like in the class feed. The main difference is that parents can interact with your posts and polls, which may be a helpful feature for young students. It's worthwhile to note that families will receive notifications for the class feed or parent group in the same way by clicking on the bell icon. Many teachers are also communicating with parents in EdSpe by using broadcast messages. This sends out a message to all your parents at once, but if a parent responds to you, it is in a private message. Watch our video on messaging, which is linked in the EdSpe resource hub under communication. Let's now head into the demo environment where I'll show you a group and a class feed. This is my teacher homepage. On the left hand side, I have my classes panel. I am choosing to use my homeroom class as my class communication feed. You can see here up at the top that I can create a note, a journal, which is the feature that allows you to post in advance, an event or a poll. Keep in mind if you create a poll in the class feed, parents will not be able to interact with it. I have created a few different posts, one just showing what our class is up to, a picture of our students outside, a reminder, and a welcome message. I have a content panel to the left where I can upload helpful materials and a library section over here on the right where I can add additional things for parents and students. Just a reminder that parents are unable to comment or like within the class feed. So this would be for informational purposes only. Parents would not be able to interact with these posts. Back from my home page, you can see that I have created a parent group. You can do this easily by clicking on the My Groups and then Create. For more information on creating a group, see our video on Groups from the EdSpe Resource Hub. Once inside the group, you can see it looks a lot like the class feed. I can create a note, an event, and a poll, 
but not a journal message, which would allow me to make a post in advance. If I create a poll, my parents would be able to respond to that poll. I made a lot of the same posts. Once again, a reminder, a welcome message, and I could post pictures of what we're doing in class here as well. On the right hand side, I also have that library area that will allow me to upload documents for parents and students. In order to get your parents into a group, you first have to create the group. You can then go in and invite your parents from the group, but you would have to enter them in name by name. Instead, there's a really quick way. From your home page, click on My Parents. Use the filters on the left-hand side to select the class. Hit the gear icon and select All. Then click the drop-down arrow and select Invite to Group. Choose the group from the drop-down and add your parents. Once they're added or invited, they will get a notification on the bell icon in both the desktop and mobile applications. Once parents are added to the group, they can comment, like, and interact with posts. The posts are visible to everyone within the group, including the teacher and other parents. Some things to ponder after knowing the difference between the class feed and the parent group are what types of items should be shared with the whole class and all parents? Which works better for you, using the class feed or a parent group? Now let's talk about sharing learning evidence. This is done by using the learning story. Remember that learning stories should be focused on learning in relation to the outcome or goals. In this year's EDSBE goal for all elementary teachers, one to two pieces of quality learning evidence is to be shared with families per term. Intentionality when setting up invitations for your students is key. Using backwards by design, thinking about those I can statements should affect how you craft learning opportunities within your classroom. Before we get into the how around posting learning evidence, let's talk about the tips for quality learning stories. These tips were shared at the Growing in Knowledge PD in August and again on the October 7th PLD. Remember, not everything a student does needs to go in the learning story. It may feel overwhelming to think that you always have to be taking pictures or videos of your students. However, this is not the case. Giving live, in-the-moment feedback and instruction to students should always be your priority. Intentionally choosing which ICANN statements or goals you would like to capture and curate evidence for is essential in not overloading yourself. Not everything in the learning story needs to be an end product. Formative or process evidence is just as important. Balanced assessment. Using a combination of products, observations, and conversations is essential in what you share with families. Showing them what you notice about student learning may also prompt them to make the same observations at home about their child's progress. Thinking about what students are doing and saying and how that connects to the I can statements can lead to very powerful evidence collection. Evidence should be gathered by learning outcome or goal. What kind of success criteria can you use to help parents track their child's progress in relation to the learning goal? Maybe you're thinking of a checklist, rubric, or exemplar. And lastly, volume does not equal rigor. Really focusing on that high quality evidence that is intentional, curated, and related to the ICANN statements is much more important than posting pictures often. Here are some examples from a teacher in our division. Miss Erica Long, she teaches grade one. You can see here in her math example, she has first posted an I can statement. In this post, you can click the arrow to go to the right where you would see a video of Matthew achieving this I can statement, counting forward by ones. She also left a very informative comment for the family. Matthew has an excellent understanding of counting up to 100 and is confident in his knowledge. In this post, she's sharing with families what the learning goal was, a sample of the student in their attempt at the learning goal, and a helpful and informative comment for families, letting them know where their child is in relation to the learning goal. The second example on the right is also a video. You can see that the outcome is tagged below, 
and the comment that she shared lets the family know exactly where Presley is in relation to the learning goal of counting by ones to 100. Here is an ELA example. She has taken a picture of the student's individual work and is giving something for families to notice and practice at home using different consonant blends and sounds. Again, here we have another video. You can see again the outcome is tagged and she's also created some custom tags, goal setting and early literacy skills that may help her with organizing the evidence later. She has left a detailed and informative comment as to where Jake is in relation to the learning goals. She gives some clear next steps for the family to support their student. Now let's go into the demo environment where I will show you how to create new evidence and how to organize evidence within the learning story. You can see here that there is a new evidence button under all of these classes. You can use this to quickly add new evidence for a student or a group of students. You would then click on the names of the students in which the evidence is applicable to and then click select and then you could add your media. So you could take a photograph or video right from your computer if you have a camera. You could take a audio message or upload a file or a link. You could add some student voice capturing what the student said during the activity. Choose the day which the data was collected. Write an observation and leave a comment for your families. Create a custom tag. Here you can see there's early literacy skills, reading strategies, work habits, lifelong learner, and engaged citizen. And then you can also tag the outcomes for this class. So if you click on this outcomes picker, it will come up. And really important to note that you would hit this arrow to drop down your outcomes. And then under each of the strands, you will hit the drop down as well and select the outcome that applies. And then you would hit create. If you are ready to share this evidence, you could click share to learning story and this would share this entry to students and families. Within the mobile app you can also hit this new evidence button and use your phone's camera to capture learning evidence. From the class homepage there's also an evidence tab. You can add new evidence from here which will take you to the same form that I just showed and this is where you can actually organize your learning evidence. So you'll see the different things that you have uploaded for each student by clicking this drop down and you can share and unshare the evidence from here and double click on the item to edit. You can organize and view your evidence by tags, outcomes, date, or in a scrapbook way where you can drag and drop the different pieces. You can also select all and click share if you would like to share all of your evidence at the same time. For more information and helpful tips on organizing learning evidence, check out our video on organizing learning evidence in the EDSB Resource Hub. As we finish up this section, some things to think about. Is what you are posting evidence of learning? Have you included success criteria? Have you shared where the student is in relation to the criteria? Now that we have talked about how to engage families within EDSBE, how to curate learning stories with intention, let's talk about how we could encourage families to use the Capture app to engage and share learning evidence. Let's go right into the demo environment so I can show you how to get QR codes to send home to families or print out for students for classroom use. First, head to the class. Click Students. Click QR codes. Ensure that you have allow students and parents to capture learning evidence checked off. You can then print these codes and distribute them to students and families. Once they have the code, they'll use the Edsby Capture app from an iPad or phone to scan one of the QR codes. So when you open up this app, it is only a camera. You can take a picture or a video. So I'm just gonna scan Denise's code and then take a picture. You can have students add more photos, reflect, or upload. So I'm just gonna hit upload, and then I'm taken back to this camera view where I can upload more evidence. So that is the only features included in the Edsby Capture app. Once a student has added evidence, you'll see 
a notification under evidence. You'll see that Denise has uploaded a new picture and that it is unshared. This is a protection feature within Edsby so that if a student uploads a bunch of pictures, they don't all automatically go into the learning story. You must edit this evidence and share it. Click the drop down arrow and click edit. You can add student voice, tags and outcomes and then you can share or just save it and head back. If you're happy with the evidence as the student uploaded it, you can hit share right from here. Some things to ponder. How might you use the Capture app to engage families? How would you ensure that the evidence families collect is related to the learning goals? We would like to share a note about the Edsby Student Portfolio. Edsby Student Portfolio is separate from the learning story. While teachers can post to it from the student panorama, they themselves cannot add items from the learning story to the portfolio. This must be done from the student view. Students can also add other pieces such as awards, extracurricular accomplishments, and schoolwork that they want to showcase. We look forward to seeing how teachers utilize the portfolio as they become more comfortable in the platform, but many will still use a paper portfolio as we are getting our feet wet with Edsby. Today, we learned how to use Edsby to communicate evidence of learning using the learning story. We talked about the class feed and a parent group. We talked about the learning story to share quality learning evidence. And we talked about using the Edsby Capture app with students and families. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the GSES Edsby team.